Have you ever wondered how the pro players manage to hit volley winners out of seemingly impossible positions while you struggle to finish the floaters? Well, today's video is right for you because we're gonna go over three science-based ways on how to never miss your volley again. Okay, so today's video is gonna be science-based. Every section is gonna have a couple studies that have been done in the past or currently being done about the volleys. Um, section one, we're gonna jump right into it. Um, the first study that we're going to mention is a study in 1999 that was done by Cho and colleagues and it focused on EMG muscle activation um, during the volleys in your forearms and um, your whole body, but mostly the forearm. So what they found is that when we're volleying, your muscles are very tight in the extensor muscles. So this study was done with high level players, of course. So pretty much the whole idea here is to keep your racket stiff when you volley, but not stiff the whole time. The idea is to have it loose at first and then you stiffen it up as you contact the ball. That gives you more stability. Just because the ball is coming so fast, you need stability to actually get the volley back in. If your wrist is loose, this was this was gonna happen. Your ball's not gonna go anywhere. Um, one time that you will actually keep your wrist loose according to the same study is when you're trying to drop volley. So when the ball comes, you're, you're softening the ball as you drop volley because you want it to be short, right? But if you want the ball to go deep, you're pretty stiff here, boom, and you stiffen it up at the contact point. So again, demonstration. You're gonna be soft, 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 stiff. That's what you're gonna do. So I wish I had a partner to help me demonstrate this, but it's okay. Um, I'm just gonna feed the ball fast up myself. So if you're doing a volley and your wrist is loose, this was gonna happen. It's just going everywhere. So you can't really control it. If your wrist is tight and you're moving your body toward the volley, all the volleys are gonna go deep and in. Same thing on the back end. It's just gonna be a short motion, but your wrist is gonna be tight. If you wanna drop volley, you loosen it up just a little bit, but it's still a tight shot. So one more thing relating to uh, study number one. They had a follow-up study done in 2007, which showed the uh, same thing with varying uh, ball speeds. So what it showed is that you stay loose, 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 and then lock. So if you want to think about it, the whole time you're playing tennis, you're loose, but when you contact the ball on the volley, is the only time when you actually lock your arm up. So the idea is to always stay tight and locked as you're hitting it. But not in the other shots, don't get it confused, because in serves, forehands, backhands, you actually want to be on the looser end compared to the volley. Okay, so part number two, uh, the second, se second reason you missed your volleys. Um, this study is also actually done by Chong colleagues, but it showed a kinematic analysis of high-level tennis players when they volley and their volley technique. And what it showed is um, pretty much what most coaches tell you, but um, the best players on the tour and everywhere at a level above college level and at college level have a small backswing, a contact point right in front of your shoulders, and then they use their legs to actually get the power in the volley. So all together it looks like this, small backswing, volley in front, and you step, and then you go back. When you are volleying, you don't step as the, uh, you step at the same time as you hit the ball. And that's how you get power into it. So for an example, I saw this from, I think, actually Nick Saviano does this drill a lot with people, so you could try this when you volley. So you're here, you wanna contact the ball and then stomp. And that's how the footwork on the volley works. So you go split step, contact, stomp. That's usually how it goes. But in reality, when a shot is quick, you go like this, contact, stomp. So you don't really have time to, uh, you know, do the whole thing. But slow drills will be contact, stomp, recover. Same thing on the back end, contact, stomp, recover. And um, that way, you're making sure your back swing is small. You're making sure you're contacting it right in front and your wrist is a little bit flexed. So it's in front and here, boom. You wanna have this wrist flexion, you don't want your wrist to be like this. So again, reference in the first study, your muscles are activated here. That means your wrist is flexed like this. So boom, boom, that's all. Boom, boom. So wrist flexed and um, you're using these muscles. So this still refers to uh, step number two, but this study was done by Wang and co-authors on how your lower body affects um, your volley shot and what happens. So what they found is that at the start of your volley, your legs are bent, your hips are bent, and then they extend 
as you hit the volley. So it looks like this. So you go into mini lunge. So it looks like this. Band, extend, mini lunge. Every time on the back and same thing. Your band, extend, mini lunge. That's the footwork on the volley according to research. So, you know, I'm not taking it out of somewhere, you know, in the sky. Also, please like the video. That really helps the channel and really helps me. Um, I'm not asking you for money or anything, but uh, please like and comment if you're enjoying the video. Actually, while we're on the topic of small backswings, I want to show you a drill that helped me to get my backswing smaller, just helps my clients in general. So what I like to do is put them here and then your elbows are not allowed to go behind the net. So the net is in front of you and this is how you volley. Of course, you're not using your legs like you're supposed to, but that just helps shorten your backswing and helps you understand and realize that you actually don't need to swing the ball hard for the ball to go hard because it's already coming hard and all you're doing is just deflecting the ball like you're a wall. So yeah, try these drills and uh, let me know how it works. So in this section, we're gonna go over a concept called quiet eyes. It's actually a research done in multiple sports like basketball, tennis, golf, um, and a couple more sports that involve hand-eye coordination. And quiet eyes just means that the higher level you are of a player in any of these sports, the more time your eyes actually spend on the same spot and fixating on your target that you're trying to hit to. So, um, to better explain it, if you're a rec player, you're more likely to be looking at your opponent, looking at the ball, looking back at your opponent, looking at the net, looking at your racket, instead of having one target fixation. At a higher level, players look at their contact point for longer, so the ball comes, they start looking at their contact point right away, and then they hit the ball, and their eyes stay on the same spot. You can really see how Federer does this, and um, you can emphasize like how, how, how much emphasis Federer puts on his forehand to keep his head here. So same thing happens on the volleys and every other shot for high level players. So you want to have it here. And of course, um, all of these studies will be cited in the description, so uh, you can go and read up on quiet eyes yourself. Um, so we'll proceed with the thing, quiet eyes is number one. Number two is the timing of your split step. Um, this in section three. So timing of your split step is way earlier than what you do at the baseline. So you gotta start at least half a second earlier. Most people don't realize this because I, I haven't even realized this until um, pretty recently. So you gotta split step way earlier and then go, and then uh, react faster. So your split step way earlier than on the baseline. Try this next time. So if you're split stepping on the baseline, by the time your opponent contacts the ball, here you gotta start your split step when your opponent's racket is just back and just starting forward. So by the time the ball releases from the strings, already landed and reacted um, yeah so that should definitely help you with uh, quiet eyes and how well you move okay so one last thing I want to go over is actually your grip this is a bonus tip um, in this section I pretty much want to explain that you don't always have to use complete continental grip on the volley for an example a lot of players use in between continental and Eastern which kind of looks like this so if you see the ridges we have one, two, three, continentals on two. I like to go in between two and three on this ridge and put my knuckle on there. So that's what a lot of players are gonna use at the pro level too, on volleys as well as slices. If you really wanna check it out, Sabalenka uses pretty much um, Eastern on her slices, at least backhand slices, and same thing on the volleys. That's of course very extreme, but it is okay to mess, mess with your grip a little bit in, in between continental and Eastern. Because for a lot of people, Continental is pretty uncomfortable to hit on both sides. For me, my wrist would be kind of bent this way if I was using Continental. But with my grip, my wrist is perfectly straight on both sides. So to sum it all up, you're going to use the grip that's most comfortable to you on both sides. Your wrist is going to be locked, loose at first, but locked as you hit. And your racket is going to be pointing up. And you're going to be hitting the ball stepping right after so you're gonna land after you hit the ball so you're going forward as you do it so again bent lunge and then one last thing is you're gonna split step way earlier and then the shot is gonna work so those are gonna be your tips with uh on how to make the volleys work based on science also forgot one thing do not swing so your racket needs to be in front of you right so you contact it in front your swing doesn't go past your body and you go like this so yeah, thank you so much for watching. 
please like and comment if you enjoyed the video it really helps the channel and um you can check out the other videos on the channel i usually do science-based content because i like to read the studies and uh i don't like the fluff and uh theories i like uh i like studies so yeah thanks so much and uh have a good rest of your night yeah You better hit. Yeah. You better hit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. Fuck. <laughs> I'm <my> teaching. <laughs> oh! Put that in! <laughs> okay, that. I'll put it in. I'll put it in. <laughs> I'll put it too. <laughs> Why are you playing so good now?